Okay, so now we know that one of the ways that we can get rid of water from the body is that the kidneys will excrete it out as urine, and that urine can either be very concentrated or very dilute. And when it's very concentrated, there will be less volume of it naturally, and there might be about half a liter. If it's very dilute, if you're drinking tons of water, you might urinate out more, you might urinate out three liters, for instance, but the average would probably be about one and a half liters. So this is one way that you get rid of water from the body. But now let's try to get a more comprehensive understanding of all the ways that we gain water and all the ways that we lose water. This is one of the ways that we lose water, but there are others. So what are the ways that you gain water? Probably the most obvious is through drinking. So I'll draw a stomach here. So when you drink fluid, that goes into your stomach and then gets absorbed into your body. And on the average day, you might drink about one, or maybe a little more, 1.2 liters of fluid. But actually, it's not only drinking, also eating. And why is that? That's because obviously foods, many of them are moist. They have water in them, and so you gain that water when you eat them. So maybe another liter comes from the moisture, the, the water contained in food. But actually, there's a third way that we get water into the body, and it's pretty interesting. You might not think of it, and that is that if we have a molecule of glucose, what do we do to that molecule? Well, we burn it up, we use it up for energy. And that means that with oxidative metabolism, we turn it into ATP, right? But actually, not only ATP. This glucose molecule had a lot of carbons and hydrogens, and we combined it with oxygens, in order to do this oxidative respiration. So we combine it with oxygen. And so some of those hydrogens and those oxygens, it turns out, are turned into water. And so the third way that we get water into our bodies is actually through metabolism. And that doesn't contribute as much, but it might give you maybe 300 milliliters of water. So these are the three ways that we add water to the body. And now how does water leave the body? Well, we already talked about the main way, which is urine. We'll draw it in red to signify loss. So you lose about 1.5 liters of water to urine per day. And the second biggest loss actually happens through evaporation. And actually the main place where you lose water through evaporation is what I'm drawing here. It's actually your lungs. You breathe air in and out all the time to your lungs, and your lungs are coated with moisture. So every time you breathe air in, that moisture evaporates into the air you're breathing, and then when you breathe it out, you lose that moisture. And so through evaporation, you can lose quite a bit, actually, up to 700 milliliters of water. Now, for the most part, you don't lose too much to evaporation from your skin because your skin has a really nice epidermal layer that kind of seals off the interstitial fluid from the outside so that it cannot evaporate. But the exception to that, of course, is when we sweat. Sometimes we sweat to reduce our body temperature. And so that's another way that we lose water is through sweat. It's usually not much unless we're a professional athlete. It's usually only about 100 milliliters of water. And then the final and least glamorous way that we lose water is through feces. Feces are moist even when you don't have diarrhea, and so you can lose up to 200 milliliters of water through that way.